So you've been wondering why the OS library is called OS and not just screen changing. Well, that's because it helps you change everything that the OS has to offer. We'll be using that today to create folders and navigate the file system programmatically. So we've used OS in a really, really simple way so far, just to clear the screen. So let's import it and let's see what else it can do. First of all, OS can help us find out what files are in the folder we've currently in. OS.listdir will print a list of the files in the current directory the computer is in. In this case, you can see that I've got a bunch of hidden files, which you'll be able to see in Replit by clicking the kebab menu and going show hidden files. And you can see that those files that we're loading here are visible when we've got them shown. Now you might be thinking, well, what use is that? Well, that's very helpful for making sure that a file is actually in the folder we think it is. So with that list created, we could check to make sure it's there before we go to open a specific file. So for instance, in our auto save and auto load, we don't necessarily need to have built anything too complicated. We can just say if quicksave.txt not in files, print. And if that file was in there, for instance, then it's not going to shout at us. This allows us to check to see if files exist before we actually start fiddling with them. And then we don't need to use try and accept if we don't need to, because that introduces its own problems. We can even create a directory, a folder straight in the program if we'd like. And this is particularly useful if, for instance, we're doing a bunch of processing and we want to make a bunch of different files with different names in a separate folder. So they're not clogging up our desktop or clogging up our files view. We can feed it os.mkdir, which is short for make directory and the name of a directory. If I run it, you'll see that what it does is it creates that folder within the file tree for me. We can even use OS to rename files. OS.rename has two arguments. The file we want to rename, in this case, myname.txt, and what we want to call it. Notice it changed that file instantly. So we've got a lot of the functionality that we might need for moving and editing files straight here. In fact, what we could probably do very, very easily is create a directory, move and rename files into it so that we've got backups. Of course, if you want to be sending folder names to F equals open, you're sort of going to have a little bit of a bad time with this. Now, sometimes this won't work. And in that case, you need to pass the entire directory structure as well as the name of the file to the command using an OS function. In this case, I'm going to create a file name and I'm going to use OS path join. This takes two arguments in. The first is the path, so it's the folder. So in this case, hello forward slash. The second thing is the name of the file, a file.txt. If I send that, just change the name of the file to B file to show this works. If I send that, this works in the same way. However, this method is much more reliable than the previous method. If you are ever getting crashes because it can't find a file or a folder, chances are that it's having a bit of a freak out about trying to write to a folder structure and you'll need os.pathjoin to say, look, this isn't just text, this is a path. It'll solve a lot of problems if you do it that way. This is particularly useful with autosave and autoload. We all know that what autosave does is it wipes the entire file before it saves over the top of it. And this is particularly dangerous. Anyone that's ever played a video game will know they can almost sense when a boss is about to approach by the fact that a little logo will pop up on the screen saying do not turn off this console. The autosave feature wipes the old save and then starts adding the save data to the original file. We might want to back that up. In fact, let's make that today's challenge. Your challenge today. I would like you to go and get the to-do list with autosave and autoload from day 51. And what I'd like you to do to it is I'd like you to make sure that before you autosave, you create a backup folder, create a random file name and save a copy of that file to that folder first. 
When you're done, please publish your work in the community as usual and share it with the hashtag replit 100 days of code so we can see the amazing things you've been doing. Tomorrow is a special project that involves CSV files and the OS library to create folders upon folders of files. Thank <music> you.